Okay, welcome uh, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, joint ECB IMF IMF Economic Review Conference on uh, global challenges and channels for fiscal and monetary policy. It's uh, almost exactly 80 years after the Bretton Woods Conference when the IMF was uh, uh, started, um, which was on monetary and financial. It's called Monetary and Financial Conference. So it's my pleasure to introduce Philip Lane, uh, executive board member of the ECB, and Gita Gopinath, first deputy managing director of the IMF, who will uh, welcome you on behalf of the hosting institutions. Thank you, Frank. And uh, indeed, uh, my, my role this morning is to, to uh, welcome you on behalf of the ECB. So, so this is uh, obviously joint with the IMF and the IMF Economic Review. And uh, I, I think, uh, uh, what I want to do just in these uh, uh, opening remarks is, is really not so much focused on the theme of the conference. So, of course, uh, I'm very interested in that, but more in terms of the uh, a connection to the research methods that we're, uh, we're using here at ECB. Um, because I mean, when I looked at the conference program, I, I could see uh, that essentially that there's a, a lot of work on, on the agenda today and tomorrow which is essentially moving beyond the kind of representative agent, representative product macro model, and incorporating various types of heterogeneity. And uh, let me list a few examples at the ECB, uh, why we think this matters. Uh, one is in terms of consumption and labor supply of households, which I think clearly differs uh, we, in, a, I think, relevant ways across income brackets and also across different demographic cohorts. In terms of the behavior of firms, where do we think about pricing, investment, production, financing, all of that differs across the size distribution of firms and it depends on the balance sheet uh, of individual firms. Also in terms of uh, to think about the transmission of shocks, the exposure of a firm to a sectoral shock depends on the pattern of complementarities and substitution possibilities across sectors, in addition to where a firm is located in the production network. So whether it's upstream or downstream of the affected sector. In addition to taking that household perspective and the firm perspective, of course, it's also important to have the geographic perspective. So again, whether we think of uh, the role of Europe in the world, or we think about the individual members of the monetary union. And the vulner vulnerability of a region to an external shock depends not only on the direct trade linkages, but also on exposures via integrated supply chains. And uh, so for, for economic shock, you might think trade linkages are important. But financial shock also depends on the nature of the frictions that determine access to finance, together with the network of bilateral financial linkages that lie beneath the international financial system. So I've listed uh, many types of uh, heterogeneity. And of course, any one study uh, will have to focus on the types of heterogeneity that are relevant for the question in being studied. Because I think uh, it's fairly clear that not all types of heterogeneity are equally important for all shocks. So I, I trying to build a universal model where everything is, is integrated into a single model might be a bit heroic and indeed uh, not even necessary. So let me just briefly mention uh, some of the work here at ECB uh, that uh, is moving in this direction. But in fact, I'm not going to have time to mention the individual research projects. But what I will say from a policy perspective, uh, the reason why this modeling is important is, is in order to help us uh, analyze the, the data that we receive. Because increasingly, and last week is a good example, surveys play an increasingly prominent role in, in, in our monetary policy analysis. And we combine these surveys with data sets on uh, bank level characteristics, firm level characteristics, and household level characteristics. Uh, let me mention, in particular, the surveys produced here. And again, if you're not familiar with these surveys, uh, maybe some of this will be helpful in your own research. So th these include the bank lending survey, the survey on the access to finance of enterprises, the SAFE survey, the household finance and consumption survey, the corporate telephone survey. So that's a very modern uh, title, the corporate telephone survey, uh, the consumer expectation survey, and the survey professional forecasters. And then let me emphasize that the Eurosystem has also now got the distributional wealth accounts, 
which is a data set that provides new experimental quarterly statistics on household wealth. And uh, this is going to be released fairly soon. It's, it's not quite, quite out yet. Also, in relation to the labour market, uh, something that we've been uh, working hard on is called a wage tracker. So the wage tracker builds on individual data and collective bargaining agreements in different countries, which helps us to interpret the latest signals on developments in wages in the EU area and conduct sectoral analysis that can shed light on the connection between wages and prices. Uh, in addition, in terms of price setting, we use now there's a, a micro price data project here at the ECB. Uh, and essentially, as I said, all of these uh, data sets, uh, the value of these data sets and surveys is increasing in the breadth and credibility of research that provides a guide to understanding the macroeconomic impact of heterogeneity. So in other words, it's not enough for me to see, okay, you've shown me this variation across uh, individuals of, of different types. How does that aggregate to a macro impact is, is, is very important in, in this work. Uh, and so did this... Uh, Conference, I, I can see from looking at, through, through the program, I, I think would be very helpful to us. Let me just finish with just mentioning in terms of the uh, analysis of, of financial transmission that, uh, you know, we, we, we very much benefit from having granular information on balance sheets, uh, millions of individual loans, uh, the, the individual lending rates, for example, in the Anna Credit uh, data set and also the deposit rates for your area banks. And uh, we can see how all of these interact. So the interaction between firm bank sheet, balance sheets and firm ba bank balance sheets can amplify the impact of uh, any uh, change in credit av availability brought by policy tightening. So in other words, you know, when we change policy, uh, how you as a firm is affected depends on uh, the bank you, you have a relationship with how, how your bank is affected and, and the state of your own balance sheet. And this is helpful to disentangle credit supply from demand in understanding uh, the shift in, in monetary policy. It's also important that we have security level data as well as loan and transaction level data uh, because uh, ha having that security level data helps us work out the differences across countries and sectors in terms of the impact of monetary policy, the impact of monetary policy and bank risk taking and also uh, to you know, decompose this source of changes in credit developments. So uh, in the uh, written version of, of, of this speech on the ECB website, there, there's many, many uh, references to ECB research, which I encourage you to, to click on if you want to find out more. And there's also a, a background uh, slideshow, which essentially takes some of the slides I showed to the Governing Council last week which uses the survey level data um, that I've been mentioning. So in other words, you know, straight from a heterogeneity in many ways into the policy discussion. And again, coming back to the, the techniques that, that will be on, on show today and tomorrow, uh, I think there's a, a lot of uh, promise here uh, on these fronts. So as I say, I, I decided, uh, and maybe Gita will take up some of the, the policy questions uh, that are connected. I've just more focused on the, on the research methods, which I think is, is a very valuable uh, contribution for this particular conference, given its connection to the IMF Economic Review. Uh, so with, with that, I'll hand over to Virtual Gita, but um, I have to leave because we have a board meeting, but uh, I'll be back later on in the day and even more tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Philip, uh, for these introductory remarks and, and highlighting the importance of the research that's done both here and during the conference, or that will be presented during the conference. Good morning. It is an honor to welcome you to our 2024 IMF Economic Review Summer Conference, co-hosted with the European Central Bank. This event brings together some of the brightest minds in economic policy and research. Its success would not be pos possible without the leadership of Philip Lane and Liu Clavin and the tremendous efforts of our co-hosts and colleagues. The theme of this year's conference, Global Challenges and Channels for Fiscal and Monetary Policy, could not be more timely. Why? Because after years of large shocks, including a global pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, policymakers find themselves in a new and difficult environment, one that is testing the effectiveness of monetary and fiscal policies. 
Though the global economy has shown remarkable resilience, growth remains weak by historical standards. And at just over 3%, medium-term growth prospects are the weakest in decades. Meanwhile, global public debt remains high, around 9 percentage points above pre-pandemic levels. Without a course correction, by 2029, it is projected to reach around 100%. And with slowing momentum on global disinflation, interest rates could remain higher for longer. The combination of high debt, high rates, and low growth means policymakers have less space to address future shocks and meet growing spending demands for challenges such as climate change and aging populations. But that's not all. We also see growing signs of geoeconomic fragmentation. Around 3,000 new trade restricting measures were imposed in 2023, nearly three times the number in 2019. Both trade and investment flows are being rerouted along geopolitical lines. Russia's invasion of Ukraine marked a major turning point, increasing fragmentation pressures as countries take measures to strengthen their economic and national security. Such measures help countries adapt to the new reality of conflict. But when compared with the decades of efficiency-driven economic integration, they will likely make the global economy more shock-prone with higher inflationary pressures, reduced potential output growth, and precarious public finances. To contend with these challenges, the appropriate design of monetary and fiscal policy and the right policy mix is essential. The research and insights that will be presented over the next two days can help policymakers design, calibrate, and coordinate effective policies. How? Let me outline four ways. First, by shedding light on supply chain shocks. Using micro-level administrative data, we can better understand the channels and effects of these shocks and in turn provide a better basis on which to design effective monetary and fiscal policies. Second, by examining how changes in globalization affect the transmission of economic shocks. Changes in cross-border trade flows and shifting investment networks based on geopolitical blocks may pose challenges for monetary and fiscal policies that need thorough analysis. Third, by assessing the effectiveness of various monetary policy tools and fiscal stimulus measures. Unconventional policies, such as balance sheet policies, can complicate central bank finances when interest rates rise. And some fiscal policies may be more effective than others in stabilizing demand while reducing economic inequality. And fourth, by analyzing monetary and fiscal interactions. It is essential to understand the mechanism through which these interactions impact inflation, government debt, and financial conditions. The contributions in each of these areas, and more, can help policymakers navigate an evolving global economy. Through your discussions over the next two days, you will help us chart a course through these complex challenges. I am proud that we are partners in this effort, and I wish you a productive, an insightful conference. Thank you.